This is the mask maker kit that I currently sell on Etsy. And as you can see, it comes with a blank mask, three paints, a sponge brush, sandpaper, and a template for painting chevrons. I'm also gonna need a pair of scissors and a pencil, which are common household items. Now, in my case, I will put a clear coat on it. I'm gonna use Mod Podge so I don't have to use a spray paint or spray lacquer. Uh, this is a completely optional step. All right, let's start with the blank mask and some sandpaper. Now the goal here is to sand the entire front of the mask. You wanna take that shine off the front of the mask. You can see here, all this shine right here, you wanna sand until that's gone. So now you see how dull it is. Do that for the whole front of the mask. Get rid of that shine. Now I'm just marking my cuts. I think a lot of you have the wrong impression that a Dremel or power tools are required to add damage to these masks. And I wanna make sure that you know that that's not the case. The Dremel just makes it much easier and much quicker. And I'm doing part seven damage, even though the chevrons aren't gonna match. So don't go after me in the comments on that. I'm just doing this to show you how much damage you could do with, with simply a pair of scissors. I would suggest making some relief cuts like this. It's gonna help you along the way when you're cutting this out. It's a lot easier that way. It takes some work and it'll, it'll wear your thumb out a little bit. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but it's definitely very doable. And then here I'm taking the, the points off of some of the areas. I don't want to look like shark's teeth on the side of the mask. And then I make much smaller cuts just to add to the, the variation of the damage, make it look a little more realistic. Any remaining pencil marks need to be sanded off, so that's what I'm doing here, getting rid of that. And with a knife or your scissors, you can scrape more damage and grooves into the mask to add more texture to it. Now I'm grabbing the brown to dirty it up and the red for my chevrons. All I'm doing here is soaking the sponge brush in water and then dipping it in the brown paint and then squeezing it and, and covering the mask in, in wet brown paint so we can paint it across and smear it in. And the goal with this, that's why I included this shade of brown, just to give it that aged brown color to the mask and not be just brand new white. If you want a clean mask, then just leave it white and don't do this part. But as you can see, as you paint it on, it, it fades quite a bit. It's not gonna be heavy brown covering the mask. It's just enough to make it look old and weathered. Now you can cut the chevrons out using your scissors. I wouldn't recommend it. As you can see here, it does a terrible job. I very much recommend using a knife if you're gonna cut these out. And ideally you wouldn't use these as stencils. You would cut out the chevrons and use masking tape or painter's tape to tape around them on the mask and create your stencil that way. But I'm trying to use only what's in the box to show you that it can be done. I'm taping the stencils onto the mask and making sure that they're flush against the mask. I kind of do a bad job with the one on the left, you'll see here in a minute, but basically just tape them on and then use the sponge brush to kind of dab the paint on, on there. Don't paint across it in swipes just to avoid streaks. That's one thing I like about these sponge brushes is that when you uh, dab it on like this, it, it dries really well without any streaks. And then you can see here, I got two out of three. Two out of three ain't bad but this one wasn't flush against the mask. You can see how the paint got underneath the stencil. This is very easy to fix. Use a knife blade or maybe the, one of the blades on the scissors and just scrape along the edges and you can clean up your edges really nice if you just scrape along them. Now I'm using sandpaper to add some distressing and some damage to the chevrons. I really like this look. Again, if you wanna keep all this like clean, don't do this part. I definitely want this mask to be damaged and I'm showing you how much you can do strictly with what's in the box. Ideally, you would have a darker brown to add dirt, but I'm only working with the paint that's provided. I'm gonna to try to make it happen. So 
Now I'm just dry brushing lots of that brown paint around the mask, adding dirt, using my fingers and stuff to smudge it around. So here I'm just going around the entire mask and adding dirt all over the place. You can use sandpaper to add distressing and texture to that dirt. If you have a rag that you can use, just dip it in water and soak it and then squeeze it out so it's really damp but not dripping wet. And then just press and twist or press and jab against the paint and you'll create some really nice texture. I personally love adding this type of texture to my paint. You can see it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna add some Mod Podge now because I like to add a protective layer to my mask as well as some shine. And that's the point of this. I'm using my sponge brush to paint on some gloss Mod Podge. And this stuff is available just about everywhere. Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Lowe's, I mean, you name it. You can find Mod Podge just about anywhere. I'm using Mod Podge in this video because some of you might be too young to buy spray paint or don't have access to it where you live or where you live, it's extremely expensive. I know some of you live in other countries and you've said that spray paint is something like $40 a can, which is insane. I definitely recommend you use spray paint, some kind of spray gloss or spray lacquer as your finishing coat. Now check this out, this is pretty funny. I'm trying to use a lighter and matches to darken the paint in different areas. I want that brown to be darker and just kind of mix up the color. Keep an eye on that chevron right there on the cheek. Uh, I accidentally light this mask on fire. <laughs> that was a complete accident and it took me several seconds before I caught it. Uh, so don't do that. Be very, very careful if you're using this technique. I added some more paint because I think the Mod Podge was preventing the fire from really having an effect on the paint. And now you can see it darkening up. Now I'm using matches as well to kind of just char those edges and make them either very dark brown or black in some areas. This mask maker kit is intended to be your starting point. I highly recommend adding paints and different things that you can use. Uh, maybe a very dark brown or black or very dark gray for more uh, variations of your dirt. Here I'm also using the lighter to heat up some of the plastic and bend some of the areas. If you're gonna have some extreme damage like this, it really helps to change the direction or warp the plastic in some areas. Now I'm using one of the blades of the scissors. You could also use a knife for this or a, I mean, a steak knife or a fork, or whatever tools you have available at the house. But I'm using a scissor blade to add a lot of texture and uh, damage to the paint. For only using one acrylic paint for dirt, I think this is a very good result. I'm very happy with it. Again, if you can, I highly recommend adding more acrylic paints to mix up the colors and create more of an effect with the mask. But if all you have access to are a blank mask and acrylic paints, you can do a whole lot with it. Anyway, I hope you'll visit my Etsy shop. I have blank masks and other resources to help you in your mask creation process. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you found it helpful or informative, or even if it was just a little bit entertaining. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Catch you later.